My name is David Silver, owner of the Vintage Watch Company based in London's Burlington Arcade, the largest collection of vintage Rolex watches on display anywhere in the world. So we've already talked about the Stella Dials and the Daytona um, models and if you haven't seen those videos then please go check them out but today we're going to be talking about the Rolex GMT. So in 1954 Pan Am American Airlines contact Rolex and commission them to make a watch for their transatlantic pilots, a watch that can display two time zones simultaneously. Rolex came up with a design that was revolutionary at the time. They created a dual color bezel with um, nighttime hours at the top and daylight hours at the bottom. Picking up on this commission, Rolex created the GMT Master named after Greenwich Mean Time. They added an additional 24 hour hand at the bottom of the clock that when rotated with the bezel would read an alternative time zone. The first generation of these pieces um, were made with a Bakelite plastic acrylic style of bezel. A few years after production, the watch is made most famous by Pussy Galore in the film Goldfinger. She, a pilot herself, sports a man's size Rolex GMT Master on her wrist during the film. And that launches what has become the most iconic of pieces. The Pepsi bezels, as they are called now, are very, very distinctive in their blue and red tone. Later pieces are now called Coke bezels as they introduced a black variant to the design of the bezel an all black variant also and I will now talk through all the different options that were available over the years. So let's start with the Bakelite version, the reference 6542, the 1950s pieces. So the commission the Pan Am made was so successful that Rolex introduced the watch um, as a design piece in their own collection. The early pieces are made, as I've said, with Bakelite around the outside of the bezel itself and no crown protection on the guard at all. A very distinctive large case automatic movement with early lightweight bracelets. These pieces are also highly luminous, filled with radium luminous paint. They were clearly visible at nighttime in the cockpit also. I'm lucky to have in front of me here four pieces four Bakelite bezels in various different tones of colour. You can see how the bezels themselves have faded over the years, how the dials have changed colour, um, the mirror finish to the, to the dial face itself, the second hands, the roulette, red and black dates are also a lovely feature of this period. What's really interesting to see about these two pieces is how the dials have changed colour. This particular process is now called tropical a tropicalized color change from its original black format through sunlight and temperature changes completely the face of the watch. This one on the right hand side has completely gone an amazing brown color compared with a much cleaner true black example of how it would have originally been made. As in the later pieces it's nice to see that the early Jubilee bracelets were also available on these watches and they do change the look quite dramatically. One of the pieces is quite extraordinary actually because it came in with all its original documentation. It has its original Rolex timing certificate, chronometer paper, the actual warranty cards and the marketing booklet at the time for the GMT which is of the 6542 model. To have all of that with one watch, quite extraordinary actually. Between 1959 and 1960, you see the introduction of protection around the crown guard, firstly made at a point. After the pointed crown guards, the guards themselves from about 1963, 1964, start to round off much more. And you can see here, from the middle of the 1960s, these gilt dials, very glossy with all the text printed in gold. Now quickly in front of you are 60s and 70s pieces, all the same reference, 1675, the most iconic GMT. 
and I think it's pretty obvious why I'm so passionate about these pieces because they're entirely the same and no one watch in front of you looks the same absolutely unique the way the colors change and I love changing them up putting straps on them crocodile straps NATO bracelets as well and you get an entirely different look every time you change the bracelet Options two in the 1675 series to have the watch in steel and gold with brown dial matching two-tone brown bezel and full black, full black dial. These were also available fully in gold, as you can see in the book. Not much changes till really the end of the 1970s, about 1979. Rolex introduces the quick set function to the date. So it's much easier to operate the date itself. You don't have to keep going 24 hours on the clock to manually change the date. Fast forward a bit to 1983, we see the introduction of the GMT Master II and the Coke bezel variant, black and red. First models were later known as the Fat Lady because their cases were significantly heavier and fatter across the overall style of the watch. Here one with its original box and paperwork. When you pick up the watch, you immediately notice the heaviness of the case. It's quite remarkable the difference compared to the later pieces. Much, much fatter in the overall case design and the lugs themselves. The very first models missed the word date on the signature of the dial so they simply read Rolex Oyster Perpetual. This one here with its original documentation clearly denoting the reference number 16760. This particular example is from 1988. One extra detail you'll notice on the Fat Lady um, models is the introduction of the sapphire glass and the dial has completely changed. It's no longer the matte finish, it's a glossy black shiny finish and the plotters of the luminous themselves are now bordered by white gold. So the next feature to change is the dial on the 16750 series. So the quick set function that we just saw before that was introduced in 1979 does then have its dial changed to that same glossy mirror finish with the plotters circled in white gold. But the plastic glass remains until later on. The late 1980s, you then see the full change to the GMT that you know and recognize from the 1990s onwards. Full glossy dial, sapphire glass. I don't think it's any great surprise as to what I'm gonna talk about in the next video, but the James Bond Submariner, the iconic piece made famous by Sean Connery in Dr. No, 1962 the ultimate tool watch, the ultimate diver's piece.